Hi, this is Dan Petrock. This is a solutions video for the supplement to the final exam spring 2014 for my statistics class. This first example is a pretty straightforward hypothesis test uh, for means. It's, uh, there's a company that gives a test and the average has traditionally been um, 160. Uh, then they give a bunch of these college graduates and they score 183. So really you kind of check to see if 160 is uh, if the population um, or the mean mean from this population is higher than than what we've seen. So the null hypothesis is that the average is 60. The alternative is that's higher than 160. And I'm using a t statistic here. You might be tempted to use a z, and I think I actually counted it right if people did because it does say it's from a normally distributed population, but it doesn't give us the population standard deviation. It only gives us a sample uh, standard deviation. So. Um, that's why I would I would defer to T here, um, but I didn't I don't think I freaked out people if they use Z, um, but I would encourage T here and, and just in general when we're working with means uh, it's just smarter to use T, and so we've got a sample of 25 people here. We find this T statistic is 9.58, very large. Uh, that p value would almost be zero. So that's like the chance of getting this much difference by random chance really. Uh, very small, which means we should reject the null. It's much less than 0.05. It means there's significant evidence the population mean of the test scores is greater than 160. And then we did a 95% confidence interval. Again, I use this T right here. If I go, so this 2.064 comes from the T table, 24 degrees of freedom, 95% confidence. Um, so we've got a, we're 95% confident the true mean uh, test score from this population is between 178 and 187. That's definitely higher than 160, which kind of backs up what we had there. Number two is a linear regression. Uh, they give you the data, they give you the regression equation, they give you R right here, they give, I give you scatter plot. So what do we do from here? Well, it has to make a residual plot. So make a horizontal line here where zero is kind of nominal. This is right on the line and these are how the dots are in relation so the residual is how far off the line they are so you can see like this one's above above these are above these are below so you can kind of see uh, how do these how does this data how well does the line fit the data on this residual plot and you kind of see there might be a little pattern here because it's like above below above um, if I was going to pick the next one it might be above so there might be some pattern here so it asks, is this a good model? Um, and I would say no for two reasons. R is extremely low. R was only like 0.35, so not um, a strong R value. Also uh, not uh, an awesome uh, random pattern here with a residual plot. And then it says, what percent of the variation can be explained by, this is reading based on typing speed, and that's only about, if you take R and square it, R squared is 0.12, so only about 12% of the variation is explained here. But if we did use this model, what would it predict? We put 65 in for their uh, typing speed, that would give them a reading speed of 517 words per minute. Um, on number six is a uh, test for goodness of fit. Rolling a die 48 times, we would expect them all to be the same. So our null hypothesis is it's a fair die. They're all the same. The alternative is that it's not. At least one of these is off, so like a loaded die. Uh, the expected value for each, since there's 48 rolls, six numbers, that would be eight. We'd expect eight to be in all these frequencies, but it's not. So we calculate the chi-squared statistic here, and we find the difference between each frequency compared to eight, square those and divide it by the expected. And we do that for all six. And here's that calculation. So we get a chi-squared of 22.25. And our degrees of freedom, there's six categories. Six minus one is five. So five degrees of freedom. If you look up 22.25 in the chi-squared table, again, very, very small. P-value is less than 0 0.005. We reject the null. This, uh, this shows us that it's not a fair die. And the last one is just a quick multiple choice one where uh, you're supposed to interpret this analysis of variance. And, um, you know, our null hypothesis on these would be like all the means of all the groups are the same. The alternative is that there's at least one different. This uh, computer printout, this is from Minitab or it could be from StatCrunch or whatever. This p-value is 0 0.01, which tells us it's rare. Uh, we would reject the null and say that... Uh, there is a difference at least in at least one of these means or reject the null hypothesis, the p-value is less than significant self. Just interpreting a p-value in this one. So that's it. Um, this is worth 24 points. The multiple choice is 22 points. So uh, a little over half was from this free response. Hopes this help. I hope this helps get you ready for the final exam.